All right, this is the second video where we're going to talk about the normal model. We built it last time, we drew the thing up, we noticed we got introduced to this thing, Z-score, okay? We're going to talk about that, uh, calculating Z-scores and stuff like that and, um, in a minute. But first thing I want to do is talk about a function that connects um, the two rows of the model. Remember, we talked about everything above here is in the model. So the Z-scores, these always correspond with each other. So I just want to make sure we know how to go back and forth from z-score to percentile. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. Going from z-score over to percentile and back. And the way we do that, to go from z-score to percentile, we use this function norm cdf. And your input is two z-scores. I like, like z-left, z-right. To go back the other way, you use the function called inverse norm. And you just put the percentile in and out pops a z-score. So remember, we're talking about chipmunks and acorns. We'll get back to that in a minute, but let's just put some numbers in to get used to how to use this thing, norm CDF and inverse norm. Because these guys are always paired. Okay? There's a table in the back of your book, and it, and it tells you, and it's a table, it never changes. So you know that a z-score on the outside always goes with this percentile, or any percentile always goes with just that same z-score, always. Your calculator does it for you, it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to just show you a couple things on your calculator first, and then we'll uh, come back up here and take a look at uh, doing them and looking at some more... Uh, some more stuff. So let's go right in. Where are we going to find it on our calculator? That's that's the question first. And uh, and how are we going to and how are we going to do this stuff? So we're talking here about a normal distribution. So let's just talk. Here's my calculator right here. Uh, where do you think my distributions are going to be? Uh, oh look at that, dister. So I hit second dister, and look what comes up. Norm PDF, norm CDF. So the first one we're going to talk about is norm CDF. So I'm going to go down. I can hit the number two or scroll down and hit enter. Either way. And I have norm CDF. Now notice what I talked about. Norm CDF up there. It said you need a Z left and Z right. You put two Z's in. Ooh, interesting. So let's see. If I put this Z score, let's see, where's my marker? If I put negative one in and one, what percent should come out? What percent is between a Z score of one and negative one? Let's look. 68% of the data. We know 68% of the data is between a Z score of negative one. In one, remember what z score is, just the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So let's put in norm CDF, negative one, one, and let's see if that area, 68% of the whole curve, the area under the whole curve is one, so this should be 68% of that, 0.68. Let's try. His z score, I get norm CDF, I'm going to put in negative one, one, but make sure you use this negative down here. Negative one, comma, one, and my parentheses. There it is, let's hit enter. Bingo, 68%. Cool, let's see what's between a z-score of zero and one. Hmm, second dister two, norm CDF. Let's see what happens. Let's go zero, comma, negative one. Let's see what's between those two. Oh, you can see me. Let's see what's between those two. Enter, 34% between zero and negative one. Let's see. 34% between zero and negative one. Wow, can you believe that? So what percent, so you can see um, this is happening. So it's kind of cool. Um, I can put any of these things into norm C. I can put negative two, negative one, and 13.5 should come out. Let's see, uh, norm CDF, second district two, negative two, comma, negative one, comma, Boom! 13.5. How crazy is that? Yeah. So it gives me this area. That's cool. So the input is a z-score and the output is a percent. I wonder if I can put in a z-score and get out a percent aisle. So let's see. If I put a z-score in, let's see. It's like, for instance, I wonder if I can put in a zero and, and or let's say one and 84% will come out. So let's see. Well, my norm CDF takes two Z's, a Z on the right and a Z on the left. I want to know, I want to go from here down. So um, let's see, how could I do this? Um, I definitely, one of the inputs I'm going to put in is uh, norm CDF. I'll definitely put a one on the upper 
because I want to go from here down. So the area from here down, I know, is 84%. So what z-score should I put in first? Should I go from 0 to 1? No, I don't think so, because that's going to give me 34. And if I go from negative 1 to 1, that's going to give me 68. And if I go from here, to, that's not going to give me enough. Even if I go down three standard deviations or four, I want to get the area, all of the area, all the way down. So I, wanna, I don't want to start one standard deviation, two, three standard deviations down. I'm going to go way down, maybe four, five, maybe ten standard deviations. Well, this thing is an inf this goes on forever. So you know what I'm going to do just to be safe? And just to remember, I'm starting way down there. I'm going to go all the way down. 999 standard deviations down, which would be, let's see, that would, that would be far, like a tenth of a mile down, just to make sure. I, I mean, there's really not much past four standard deviations, but I like to put it in negative 999, so I remember, I'm starting way up there, and I'm, and I'm finding the cumulative density. I'm adding up the area all the way up to a z-score of 1. So I'm going to do norm CDF, negative 999, and find the area all the way up to a z-score of 1. So let's see. Uh, norm CDF, second district 2, negative 999, comma, z-score of 1. Ooh, yes. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Is it on there? We get it out at 80.84. So from negative 999, all the way up to 1, the area under the curve is 84%, which is exactly what we know is the percent aisle. So when you're finding percent aisle, you put in negative 999, right? And remember, 1, the z-score of 1, is 1 standard deviation above the mean, which would be like having 30 acorns, a, a squirrel with 30 acorns. So if someone said, what percent of the squirrel, what percent of the squirrels could fit fit less than 30 in their mouth, you know it's 84% because you can actually, you know, just look at this and tell. But you know that 30 corresponds to the z-score of 1 and you want to know the area below because they ask for percentile or percent below. So what percent less? So you go from a z-score of 1, the input here is 1, so you can go from negative 999 all the way up to 1. But if the question was what percent could fit more than 30 in their mouth, you want to find the area from 1 here all the way down there forever. So now this time, if I want to know more than, I want to know this side, I want to find the area from here off to infinity. So in that case, I'm going to find, I'm going to start at 1 on the left and go up to 999. Let's see if that gives me my percent above there, which should be about 16, right? If 84 is to the left. But let's see if that gives me 16% for more than, let's see. Um, second district 2, norm CDF, 1 comma, let's call it the 999. 999, I'm going to put a lot of 9's in there. 16%, just as I thought. This thing is awesome. It's 0.158, it's about 0.16, about 16%. Remember, percent means hundredth. So look at that. Fifth, that's, that's 16 hundredths, so it's 16%. Okay, cool. All right, so that's... Norm CDF. It gives you the area between two Z's. When you want to know the percent more than, okay, let me just give you a quick little summary. So, just some people like to write this down um, if you didn't quite get it. When, when you're doing norm CDF, you go from negative 999 up to the Z score when you want to know percent aisle or less than. You go from the z-score up to 9, you start at the z and go out to 999 when you want to know more or percent more. And you go between two z's when you want to know percent between. Right? So if I was like to ask you, uh, what percent of the um, what percent of the chipmunks could fit between uh, 18 and 24 uh, acorns in their mouth? Well, I find the z-score for 18, which is negative 1, find the z-score for 24, which is 0, and I have the z-scores that go with these two numbers. There's a, calcul there's a calculation. We're going to show you that next. And I put in norm CDF, negative 1, 0, and out comes 0.34, which is the percent between. That's norm CDF. So notice norm CDF. You put in a z, out comes percent. Okay? Now, the other one is inverse norm. So remember, norm CDF, you put in a Z, you put in a Z, Z goes in, shh, out comes percent. This one, you put in a percent, 
I'll, out comes a Z. So, I like to cross my Z's here so I know what I'm talking about. Good. Uh, let's do inverse poem. Inverse poem, you put a percent I'll in. So, I'm going to try a couple on here. Notice it was right below it. All right. Let's see. So, let's go to second distance. Let's find out where that thing is here. Um, let's go in here to my calculator. All right. I'm going to hit second and distribution, and here they all are. And notice inverse norm is number three. So I hit three, there's inverse norm. Now what I put in here is a percentile in decimal form. So if I put in 0.84, one should come out, or close to one, because it's not exact. Uh, when we memorize mean 68, 95, 99.7, it's, it's a little bit off from that, but it's just close enough. So let's put in uh, inverse norm 0.84. Or I put 0 0.54. 0 0.84, enter. Oh, 0.994. What's that? It's about, look at that, 0 0.994. It's about 1. Okay, it's a z score. What comes out is your z score? A z score of about 1. What if I put in 0.975? Second district 3. Inverse norm, 0.975. Notice what's going to come out. It's going to be about 2. Z score of 2. What if I put in negative 2? Same thing. And what if I put in uh, 0.025? The second, the, the, but to make sure when you're going to put in like the third percentile or the fifth percentile, let's, let's try the fifth percentile. It's 0.05. So we do inverse norm 0.05. Let's see what we get. Second district 3, 0.05. The fifth percentile, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess the fifth percentile is like negative one point something. Yes! Negative one point six four. I can tell just by looking. I get a kind of an idea. So like if I find, like if I want to find the 60th percentile, it's going to be between, sorry, I'm going to put a zero there, between zero and one, maybe like point, point three or something, 0.3, or some number between 0 and 1, that's fine. Inverse norm, 0 0.60. Let's see what inverse norm 0 0.60 is, the 60th percentile, which is 0 0.6. Second, district 3, inverse norm 0 0.6 is 0.25, about a, about a quarter of a standard deviation above the mean. Look at that. About a quarter of a standard deviation, not a whole standard deviation, but about a quarter. This gets confusing because a lot of people will look at that and say, oh, that's about, uh, that looks like about 25%. Well, that, it's 25% it's of a standard deviation, yeah, but I mean, that's how many, that's the z-score that came out. It's 0.25 standard deviations above the mean. So don't confuse that. When we look what we put in, we put in inverse norm 0.60. So the 60th percentile. is about one quarter of a standard deviation above the mean, always. Okay, about 0.25, look at, about a quarter of, a, not a whole standard deviation, but about a quarter of one would get you into the 60th percentile. Okay, about 60%. So that's how they work. So the way I like to draw it is I like to draw it, I like to have this. Here's a little picture you can take home with you and remember it, all right, let's see. Let me erase that right there. I'm going to use this for the next uh, slide, too. But here it goes. To go from Z over to percent, we use norm CDF. Okay? We'll go this direction. Uh, two Z scores, a left one and a right one. Okay? If you actually put them in reverse, you get a negative percent. So just take the negative off. You put it in reverse. But I like it. I like to put them in order because I want you to remember. Like you find the area between, and I want you to get it all situated geometrically in your head, so conceptually you'll get it. And then coming the other way here, we use uh, inverse norm, and we put in a percentile, and we put it in decimal form. Okay. We put it in decimal form. So don't forget that, okay? Notice the connection though. You put them in, two Z's, it gives you the area between, it gives you a percent. In to, you put a Z score in, out comes percent. You put a percent into this, out comes a Z score.
We can't travel to, from data, from acorns to percentile without traveling through this thing Z. So let's go look at that thing Z uh, next, okay? Oh, whoops, I got to shut this off. Oopsie doopsie.